Hey everybody, welcome into this Orange Zone Extra. I'm Tommy Sladak and joining me, he needs no introduction. He's a Syracuse legend. It's number five. It's Donovan McNabb. Welcome back to town. How's CMY treating you this week? Pretty good? You know what? Not bad. Uh, the rain. Uh, was expecting some sunshine, maybe mm -hmm. about 75, 80. Um, no, not here at Syracuse, but <laughs> uh, it's, it's just exciting always to get back. It's exciting to get back and see the blue and orange, uh, have a daughter to go to school here. Right. So uh, I'm no longer just kind of that guy who played football. I'm just, I'm dad now. So right. uh, it's a phase in which we all go through, but I'm excited about it. You have any Syracuse dad gear? You got like a hat or a bumper sticker? I don't because I'm not there yet. I'm still young, yes. uh, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my swag where it's comfortable for the youth. Got that. Um, got that. I've Walk got the that. I've got the dad swag. The dad swag is the kind of the big hoodie. Sure. Um, you know, might wear the bucket hat. Mm -hmm. um, where your your kids are just kind of like that. No, no one's wearing that. And it's like, yeah, I am. The baggy right. jeans. You know, we're still wearing the baggy jeans. Uh, I'm just not ready for the the skinny jean aspect. Of, uh -huh. You know, my shoe game is up to par because I'm all about the shoes. But yeah, just um, the dad swag I got to get rid of. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and having having Lexi here. Yeah. And having her be a part of women's college basketball right. when it's. I mean, booming. The, the popularity is skyrocketing. It's booming, What's yeah. that like to be the father of someone that's walk, going through that process? Well, it's funny you bring that up because, you know, my wife and I, we coach club basketball. Uh, obviously, during when Lexi was eighth grade on. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, it's one in which it's exciting because we've seen this growth happening. And a lot of these girls uh, that are exploding now, like the Paige Buchers, I, I've seen her on the Under Armour circuit, the Caitlin Clarks, when she played with, with Attack, Iowa Attack, we, we've seen her. Uh, a couple girls that are playing in, in college now, we've seen them all throughout the circuit. And, and my niece played with UConn, so uh, I got a chance to watch the Maya Moores, the Brianna Stewarts, um, you know, the list goes on of players, and it's like, now people are starting to appreciate them a little bit more. Now, is it taken away from the men's game? No. but. I think what you're seeing is you're seeing storylines happen. You're seeing Dawn Staley uh, win her third national championship, you know, from when she was two-time player of the year uh, at Virginia. Uh, you got Gina R. Emma, who was big time carrying UConn for years uh, and the players that he coached. Uh, Pat Summit, who passed away, you know, rest her soul, with things she did at Tennessee. Mm -hmm. uh, the list goes on of just, I mean, Tyra Vanderpoel, Van she's now retired at what she did with Stanford and the USA teams. So I just think for a lot of us basketball fans, it brings excitement because now you think of college and people are starting to go and support the girls game while they're watching the men, but they're going to support. So it's an exciting time for, for really these young kids on campus. And to be back and you're receiving this, this high honor for right. alumni. Um, what would 18-year-old Donovan think of you being back to get this, man? Why they give it to me? <laughs> like, um, you know, it just, as a young kid, and even not so much 18 because I was young coming into, you know, coming to the university, but it's just you don't see that part of your path or your future. Mm -hmm. Like, you're, you're still trying to get your feet wet. You're still trying to keep your head above water. Uh, so you're battling, you're competing, you're you know starting to get a little bit of attention for the things that you're doing, but you still don't see this part of it. Um, and this is something me at 47 years old where um, years I look back and I got a kid in college, I got kids in high school and in eighth grade, and it's kind of, you know, it's rewarding because they're a part of it. Right. And everything that you explain to them of how to go about your business and you know the work that you got to put in the sacrifices that you got to make determination it's just dad talking where it's like walk 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 or hear dad again and then now all of a sudden you're receiving an award for the things that you've been able to do and how you got there it's kind of fulfilling for them too as well showing them the path well maybe they'll listen <laughs> 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 and uh, let's talk about this Syracuse football team. Correct. Fran Brown's created some pretty wild buzz True. in the offseason. True. What do you think of him taking over and just what he's created? Well, again, it's the exciting part for all the alums is he's trying to bring us a part of it. Right. Um, and the things that we're trying to do as alums is just be very supportive, um, see the progress, see the growth. If we can aid in any way, we'll, we'll love to do that. But it's more of us get a chance to just sit back and watch our university compete 
And so, you know, the scrimmage they have this weekend uh, is one in which I'll get a chance to watch. I'll be back next weekend to see the spring game. Uh, I got a chance to talk to the team today. I love what Fran is doing because he's bringing us all a part of it. But also, too, he's building that buzz within that, within that facility with the kids to trust one another. Like, this isn't a rebuilding year. This is a year we're coming to compete for the ACC. But it's all going to be all on you guys to do your job, know your role, and believe in one another. And so I love that. I get a chance to talk to them, and that was kind of my message to them is this, don't look around for anybody else to do a job that you can do. And if you can do it to the fullest, now all of a sudden you understand a little bit of what you're capable of. And if you're capable of doing anything by believing in yourself, anything can be achieved. You, you spoke to it a, a little bit there, but what's the what's the recipe for an alum like yourself to feel connected to his, his old college team? I think more or less of the door being open. Um, you know, we've been a part of situations where the doors are closed. You know, oh, so-and-so's in town. Oh, that's great. You know, can he stop by, you know, maybe have, have him talk to the team? Ah, uh, well, not today. You know, or it's, it's guys wanting tickets to go to, to the games here. And it's like, ah, oh, well, we don't have any tickets or whatever, but they can come to the facility. They can come talk to the, you know, and it's, it's kind of one in which it's, it's depressing um, for what we were able to do, and especially in my duration here, and mm -hmm. then the guys that have paved the way for me uh, to not have them be a part of it. Uh, we all have kids that are playing sports, and if we have a kid that's well-groomed to be able to play at this level, and we don't get an offer from Syracuse, you know, for our kid, uh, that's tough. Um, but again, it's, it's one in which that's the past. Um, I love the way Fran is handling this whole deal. Uh, and it's really just a, a kind of the progression of where we're going and how we're going to be in August and September, you know, from this particular port. Kyle McCord, yeah. transfer from Ohio State. What do you see in this guy? Well, I got a chance to watch him last year, and, you know, I, I enjoyed his progression. I enjoyed um, from the very start of his first start uh, as the Ohio State quarterback, full-time starting quarterback, um, his rapport with the guys. And, and I've seen guys playing for him. Uh, I remember, I go back to the Notre Dame game uh, where he led him toward the end and, and led him to, to win the game, um, which showed a lot of growth, showed a lot of maturity. And I think what he's going to bring here is he's going to bring that experience. And I got a chance to talk to him today. And the thing that I want him to do is just be who he is. Don't try to be anything different. Don't try to be Superman. Don't try to be the guy that all of a sudden now is the, he's the number one pick in the draft. You know, just be who you are and allow the people around you to do their job and do it for you. And so leadership is something that it's kind of given to just anybody. Mm -hmm. It has to be rewarded. And, and he has that leadership quality. Now he's just got to put it together. Those late 90s Syracuse teams, uh, People have a lot of great memories right. with, with what you guys built. And when you were a part of that, was there ever a moment where you looked around and said, we're going to have stars at the next level here? Like, we're, we're really something special. Or did that not no, transgress it, it, right You away? know, the, the funny thing is, I didn't really think about so much of the NFL stuff until I would say my junior year. My, mm. And that being because I redshirted, so that being my, my senior year. Early on, you're watching guys you play with and they, you know, or played against, and then they're getting drafted, and it's like, oh, well, I know I'm better than him. Um, or we have guys that are definitely better than him, and you didn't understand the process. And then getting into my junior year, where you really start to reflect on those early years, like playing with Marvin, playing with Sermon, playing with Kirby Dardar, you know, and it's like a lot of guys that you start to think about, like, wait a minute, they should be in the NFL as well. What happened? Like, why didn't they get the chance? And then you have your, you know, you have your Marvs uh, and guys that have made it and end up being first round, second round picks. But then you get later in your own college career and you start to think, like, like we have a bunch of guys that should be uh, kind of looked at to possibly make it to that next level. And what gets you there is winning. Mm -hmm what gets those guys those opportunities, because you're going to have guys that are sure shots. But then those other guys, if you're winning, now all of a sudden they're receiving that attention. And that's something we haven't had in the last couple of years. We haven't had the competitive consist consistency 
that we can have college scouts come, or I should say not college, but pro scouts come and watch mm -hmm. these, these guys. You know, again, you're going to have three or four guys that is going to bring a lot of these teams in to watch. That's when they start to find those other third, fourth round draft picks. If you build it, they will come. Absolutely. We're going straight field. And there you right go. Here. All right. All right. That's going to shock a lot of people because then they got to Google that. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, before we wrap up, I got to know when you're when you're coming to town, um, are you a foodie? You enjoy? I am. Yeah. What's what's on your radar? Is there a spot that you like to go grab something quick? You like to sit down? You know, uh, everyone knows of obviously Dinosaur Barbecue out here. Sure. Um, you know, so I don't frequent with that because, you know, I've had that for years. Uh, but it's still very good here in Syracuse. I was an Acropolis guy here mm -hmm. on campus, and I was highly pissed off when they moved it and put a Popeyes right there. Now, don't get me wrong, I like Popeyes, but Acropolis was always number one over varsity. All, all of that, but I'm a Marshall Street guy. Uh, I'll go downtown and, and hit a few spots. So, so um, I'll keep it low key of, of the different spots I hit, but I am a foodie and I, I definitely got to get my, my, uh, my good intake. You're not alone. I think the, the Acropolis story is oh. one of the biggest tractions we've ever had like on our, on our well, it's, it's, Facebook. It's right here. Yeah. And that's the reason why it's you, the you stay. It, right? Yeah, that's the reason why you stay on campus. Like yeah. you come up here, stay at the Sheridan, and it's like, I can just walk right out, go get me a slice, get some wings. You know, who knows who may walk past. So right. it's like, I remember sitting out there one time and like eight of my teammates like walked past. I'm like, what are y'all doing here? Dad mode. Uh, well, I'm bringing my kid up here to see the campus. I'm like, wow, y'all old. Now yeah. I'm here. Yeah. And so I don't have Acropolis to sit in there and talk to the guys. Like, it was so funny, the family that ran it, it was almost like we grew up with them. Sure. You know, and then their kids are now running Acropolis. So I'm like, where's dad? Where's, oh, well, you know, they're sick or, you know, we're t we took over. Now it's gone. Yeah. It's hurt. It hurts. Donovan, what would you say your, your message is to the Syracuse fan base as we get into what I think is an exciting time for a lot of people? Let's go. There we go. It's time. Like this is our time. Let's let's fill the fill the dome. Let's get the music bumping. Let's make sure you're there early tailgating. This is our year. Let's go. Let's change this thing around. Go orange. Maybe bring back Acropolis. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs>